Today's scripture comes from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Hello, everyone. Since the first day I met Mara Aloise, I knew what a true go-getter she was. There is no messing around when it comes to her getting stuff done, but I'm sure all of you know that sitting here right now. The day that, I, <clears throat> that Mara and I became good friends was the day that my world changed and I had no idea. God had a plan, a very specific and well thought out plan for Mara and I to be friends. As my mom always says, everything happens for a reason, and boy do I believe in that. Mara and I became close last December, and little did I know I would be honored enough to stand in front of you today as one of her best friends and biggest fans. Sorry. <laughs> Mara is always a person I will look up to and strive to be like. Her love for everything and everyone around her and her faith in God have really brought her a long way. I really used to think that I knew how strong Mara was until she had to stand up and conquer one of the hardest things I can imagine. In the past few months, she has tr truly shown me what a beautiful, strong, independent woman she really is, and I'm blessed to have her as a friend. Without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to all of you Miss Mara Aloise. Well, hello, everyone. Um, so first of all, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I was not expecting this big of an outcome, but thank you for being here. Um, it took me a lot of time to try the, to think of the perfect introduction to my senior chapel. I mean, I haven't even grasped the concept that my time at Westminster is almost over, and let alone coming up with ideas for this. Um, I'm still in denial that I'm graduating in May, but hopefully I can get through that. Um, so I thought to myself, should I start with a joke or a story or what? But when I was sitting in church yesterday at home, um, it hit me and I finally realized how I would start my story off. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So I really thought about this and I took this as everything happens for a reason, which is kind of the theme that I was going towards anyways. I know it's cliche, but it works. <laughs> my entire life has been revolved around the fact that everything actually does happen for a reason and that God puts certain people and situations in your life. Growing up, I was never forced to go to church, but I did try it when I was younger. Um, from the time I was in kindergarten to around the time I was in fourth grade, I went to church every Sunday with my grandmother. And I was known as the good child to my grandma because I was the only one out of my siblings who went. After a while, though, I was the only kid that went to this church. It was me and all of these older people, and I just didn't have fun anymore. So that meant no more Sunday school, no more kids' worship, no more games, nothing. And I was basically forced to sit there and listen to some guy up there for an hour. And an hour in kids' time was four showings of Rugrats. So that was clearly long enough for me. So I decided just one Sunday not to go. But that one Sunday turned into two, which turned into three, which turned into many more. Eventually, I stopped going altogether. And my parents never really said anything about me not going. They weren't concerned about it. But when I was in the summer of my ninth grade year of high school, my best friend was telling me how he was going to sing at his church service. And he just kept talking about it and making a huge deal about it. And I just kind of brushed it off. 
So finally, after he kept reminding me over and over and over again when it was and what he was singing, I just said, okay, well, where's the church? And I was asking him 21 questions. And he told me that he'd be at my house on Sunday morning at 8.15. <laughs> so I thought that I was going to die because waking up that early is just ridiculous for a ninth grader on the weekend. So, but I knew that it meant a lot to him, so I decided to go. So I woke up, got ready, and was on my way to church, somewhere that I hadn't been in about five years. I really liked the pastor. She was the first female pastor that I've ever seen, and I just really connected with with what she was telling me, and I just felt like home there. Um, I ended up going that entire rest of the summer and into my fall semester as a freshman in high school, and I was going every Sunday, Brad and his family would come pick me up, and I would just go with them. And I didn't think anything of it, you know, my, my dad always was up and just saying like, okay, have fun, like nothing of it. So New Year's Eve of my freshman year, it was a Sunday, and I was sitting there at church, and I was talking to Brad, who was about to sing again, and we were sitting in the front pew just talking away. And I get a tap on my shoulder, and I'm thinking it's anybody from the church, and I turn and I see my dad standing there, and dressed all nice and everything, ready to go for church, and I was, I looked at him, and my first response was, what are you doing here? (laughs) And he just said, oh, well, I've seen you come every Sunday, and I really want to try and go to church again, and he told me that he hadn't been to church since he was about, like, kindergarten or first grade, so I was... I was shocked. I Seeing my dad walk into that church was a moment that I'm never going to forget. I was shocked and surprised and most of all happy that he was there. My dad and I became members of the Paris Presbyterian Church the May of my sophomore year and after that we went almost every Sunday. Um, there were the occasional sleep-in Sundays so we didn't go but <laughs> we still went almost every Sunday. So I always think Without Brad being there and without Brad being a member of that church, I probably would not be attending a church regularly anymore. So a couple of years later, I have to decide where I'm going to college. It's my senior year in high school, and I was dead set all of my life going to Geneva. I was literally ready to be packed up and ready to go to Geneva. Um, My whole family, except for my one cousin, went to Geneva, and they were ready to plant a tree with our name on it. That's how big of a deal it was. (laughs) And I thought it was a little much, so I just kind of brushed it off. But I'm a people pleaser, so of course I was ready to go. But right around the time I was supposed to start filling out college applications, I had visited one of my friends up here, and he was down by the stables, and I looked at him and dead serious I said is this where you go to school down by a horse stable (laughs) and I just kind of blew it off but then he took me up to the campus and I fell in love I saw faculty interacting with students I saw students opening doors for one another and I just could tell that everyone loved where they were So as soon as I got home, of course I had to tell my parents that I fell in love with Westminster and knowing that they weren't the biggest fans of Geneva kind of helped. So um, soon after that I applied, took a tour, and now here I am in my three and a half years of college. Um, My biggest concern was would my parents like it? I was so focused about that and but then my dad always told me go where you want but they loved it too and I could definitely tell. So without visiting that friend that day, which was a complete spontaneous thing, I wouldn't be here and there would be a tree at Geneva with my family's name on it. (laughs) So, (laughs) but now it was the time to start freshman year at Westminster. Um, I was scared to death only knowing one person from my high school here, but I wanted to be involved with anything and everything like I was in high school and clearly I've done that. Um, I wanted to meet new people, and most importantly, I wanted to make my parents and siblings proud of what I had accomplished. The past three and a half years have flown by quickly. (laughs) Um, Day by day and month by month, I grew spiritually, emotionally, and mentally with the help of my beautiful sisters, my wonderful roommates, caring professors, and the entire campus as a whole. I was loving life and cherishing each moment here at Westminster. On May 11, 2012, Westminster became more to me than just a learning institution. It became a support system, 
a home away from home, and now my second family more than ever. On that beautiful spring day, my last day of finals and my first day of summer, God took two of the most important people in my life away from my brother, my sister, and myself. And I constantly think about that day, and I know that when I found out, um, I just wanted everyone to know. Um, I remember someone asking me, who do you want to know? And I immediately started rambling off names. And within 15 minutes of me finding out, I probably had at least 50 to 60 students, faculty, staff, staff that I had never even known worked here, um, <laughs> students that I had never seen go here were in my room, in and out. And from that moment on, I knew that I was going to be taken care of and that I immediately felt loved. Um, that in itself is an everything happens for a reason kind of thing because if I wouldn't have gone here, I still to this day think that no other school would be as gracious and as helpful as everyone here. And like I said, I constantly think about that day and I almost do a play by play when I think that no one's there for me because I realize that that day everyone dropped everything that they could, sisters missed finals to come see me and everything just made it better almost every time I think of that day. Um, many people don't know the things that I'm about to say, but I figured this was the perfect time to say this. Um, the day of the accident, I assumed, as most people did, that my dad was sitting in the front, my mom was sitting in the front, and my brother was sitting in the back. And that's what my head was thinking, you know, that's the most common accident is two people in the front. Um, after talking to my brother, and him telling me that he was in the front and my mother was in the back, we kind of talked about it and said, like, well, that's weird. She never sat in the back. And um, she just said that she would, and she did. And now thinking of it, and everyone's even told us this, that if my brother would have sat in the back, there was a bigger chance of losing all three of them. And that and alone is a sign from God that Scott was too young to go that day. And he... He's doing great, and I couldn't ask for a brother, big brother or younger sister to go to. Um, also, the windshield should have blown in, causing my brother even more severe pain than he was in. Um, but for some reason, it blew out, and we.